Naruto, ten Shippuden characters Haku could have defeated. Haku fell in battle well before the events of Naruto Shippuden, but he could have taken on these ten characters if he were still around. Naruto is a story about friendship, determination, and perseverance, and it focuses on a young ninja who dreams about becoming the leader of his village. There are many anime fans who adore Naruto. And there are also those who think it is overhyped, but even those naysayers cannot deny the fact that it is one of the most popular series of all time. One of the reasons why Naruto became so successful is because it introduced fans to an array of interesting and complex characters. Including Haku, an orphan who was raised and trained by Zabuza Momochi. Together, they were the first truly skilled ninja Naruto faced in actual battle. Haku died before the events of Naruto, Shippuden. But thanks to his skill and ice release Kekiai Genkai, he would have been able to take out several characters who were introduced in Shippuden. 10. Mifune's swordsmanship would have been no match for Haku's speed skill. The Five Kage Summit arc is one of the series' best arcs, and it brought fans to the Land of Iron for the first time. Where they met the samurai and their general, Mifune. He may not use genjutsu or traditional ninjutsu, but he is a powerful master swordsman whose strikes are renowned for being incredibly fast and precise. Mifune may be fast, but even he cannot keep up with Haku's speed if he is using his ice mirrors. Also, Haku was trained by Zabuza, one of the Mist Village's seven swordsmen, who was a master in his own right. And even Zabuza admitted that Haku was more dangerous than he was. 9. Haku already proved he could beat Sai during the Fourth Great Ninja War. When Sai was first introduced, some fans did not like that he was forced into Team 7, but he went on to become a somewhat interesting character. Sai was once part of Root, Kanoha's ANBU subdivision, which means that he is an incredibly skilled individual. Sai is skilled with a blade, but he's also a skilled artist and uses this skill in his jutsu by bringing his drawings to life. These drawings can be very effective, but Haku already proved that he can destroy them with ease during the Fourth Great Ninja War, and if Sai's main form of offense is neutralized, he will find himself at a disadvantage against someone with a Kekiai Genkai. 8. Kerui may have been trained by Killer B, but her swordsmanship wouldn't be enough to beat Haku. Kerui was introduced shortly after Killer B fought Sasuke and she was sent to the Leaf Village with her team to gather intelligence on Sasuke and the Akatsuki. While there, she overheard Naruto talking about Sasuke and she beat him up when he refused to give her any intel. Kerui was a skilled Cloud Village Chunin and expert swordswoman. Seeing as she was trained by Killer B himself. Unfortunately, she only uses one sword, which would be fine against a normal opponent, but Haku isn't normal as he can attack her from multiple directions at once with his mirrors. 7. Akatsuchi's physical prowess rock golems wouldn't stop Haku's attacks. When the third Tsuchikage left for the Five Kage Summit, he brought his granddaughter and Akatsuchi along as bodyguards. Akatsuchi was a jonin level shinobi, which means that he was very skilled, and he was incredibly fast despite his size. Compared to other Stone Village ninja, Akatsuchi possesses unrivaled physical strength. And he can create a large stone golem for offensive and defensive purposes. This golem may be effective, but Haku can get around it with his ice mirrors, and if there's mist around. He can still get behind Akatsuchi with the silent killing technique. 6. Sabu's greatest strength is his giant axe, which means nothing to Haku. Only the series' most powerful characters can beat every Akatsuki member, and seeing as Sabu was no match for Kisame. He defiantly isn't one of those characters. Sabu is Killer B's Enka Ninja Music Master, and he possesses surprising physical strength for someone so short. Sabu wields a giant axe that he can swing quite effortlessly because of his dexterity. But he doesn't seem to know any kind of ninjutsu, 
which puts him at a massive disadvantage against a Kekiai Genkai user like Haku. Haku can easily take him out with his mirrors and silent killing technique. Or he could just use his thousand flying water needles of death jutsu. 5. Tobi may have had would release a mind of his own, but he was nothing more than a modified white zetsu. When the white zetsu army was first introduced, they were made to look like an intimidating force. But they were actually pretty easy to take down. Tobi was once an ordinary human being, but he was trapped by Kagaya Atsutsuki's infinite tsukuyumi and eventually transformed into what is essentially a modified white zetsu. Tobi possesses the first Hokage's cells, which is why he can use wood release, but it is nowhere near as strong as the first Hokage's jutsu. Given Tobi's body structure, Haku will be able to cut through him with ease. And he should be able to halt Tobi's movements with his ice release. 4. Shiho may be a Chunin A decoder, but she's not a fighter. Kanoha's cryptanalysis team specializes in deciphering secret codes and messages, and Shiho is part of this team. Shiho appeared during Payne's assault on Kanoha, and she helped Shikamaru to decode Jiraiya's final message, which held the key to fighting Payne. Shiho may be a Chunin, but her skill lies in decoding. Not combat. This means that Haku will be able to take her out with any of the jutsu in her arsenal, and he wouldn't even need to go through the trouble of using ice release since a simple kanai would be able to get the job done. 3. Torian's insects may be lethal, but Haku can avoid them with his ice mirrors. There are several clans in Naruto who specialize in Haydn techniques, including the Aburane clan. This clan uses insects for combat and reconnaissance missions, but Torian uses a special type of insect which covers his entire body, and if he touches his opponent, the insects will spread to their body and cause them potentially lethal pain. Torian may be a former ANBU root member, but he mainly relies on his insects, and they wouldn't really pose much of a threat to Haku. In order to avoid these insects, Haku just needs to stay in his mirrors and travel between them. And he can attack Torian while doing so. 2. Haku can block Daidara's explosions with his ice dome then attack him immediately with his ice mirrors. Daidara may have not been the evilest member of the Akatsuki, but he was still incredibly dangerous. He possessed the explosion release Kekai Genkai, which allowed him to produce explosive chakra, and he turned that chakra into mobile bombs by infusing it into his clay creations. During the Fourth Great Ninja War, Haku demonstrated that he can stop explosions with an ice dome, so Daidara's main form of attack will be ineffective. Daidara also tends to fly above the battlefield to gain a distance advantage. But Haku can use his ice mirrors to surprise attack enemies from above. 1. Suijetsu would be at a huge disadvantage because Haku could freeze him if he liquefies. Suijetsu is part of the Hozuki clan, which means that he has the hydrification technique of secret jutsu that allows him to liquefy any part of his body at will. This jutsu is very useful because physical attacks can pass through him without causing him any harm, so Haku's special projectiles would have no effect on him. Fortunately, Haku can use ice release. And he can use it to freeze Suijetsu if he does liquefy himself. Suijetsu needs to be well hydrated in order to liquefy, so Haku can just force him to use up his hydration levels and then fight him normally. If this were to happen, Haku would win because Suijetsu is less skilled with the executioner's blade than Zabuza. <laughs>